Hey, I'm Jack. I'm 25 now, and I've been working for a few years. Mostly, I haven't had too many problems at work. But recently, things have been very different. I've been getting worried about it. I've been thinking about quitting and going somewhere else. I'm not sure what I should do. Maybe you can help me. I'll tell you what my problem is. So, it all started just after I left high school. I didn't go to college because I had a job lined up already at a software company. My dad was friends with the CEO there. He was called Matt, and he got me a job as a programmer. It was weird, though, because I knew no one on my first day. It was a big company, so Matt didn't often see the normal workers. He was much too busy. Basically, the only time he was not in the office or in meetings was if he was in the kitchen making a cup of coffee. I was just an 18-year-old kid. I was nervous. I remember having sweat patches under my blue shirt as I walked in for that first morning. I needn't have worried. As soon as I got there, the nice manager called Tim greeted me. He was quite young, in his 20s, and was really smiley and friendly. He shook my hand and told me he'd be my boss. Instantly, I relaxed. He was going to be great. I didn't know anything about programming, but Tim taught me everything. He sat with me every day and showed me what I needed to do. It wasn't all work. He'd often take me out for lunch, or we'd have coffee together. As the years went on, I got better at my job. I became one of the most trusted programmers at the company. Our team did well. Tim got all the praise for this, and I was okay with it. He deserved it. He was amazing at his job and was so nice to the team. Plus, his praise was praise for me. If he ever got promoted, I'd be sure to get good treatment and promotions as he went higher. That's basically been my last seven years. I've been working hard with Tim, getting better, getting more respect. I've gone from the nervous kid to a confident go-to guy. It's been really great. Other than Tim, I don't socialize with many people from work. I like to keep work and professional life separate. I've never dated anyone from the office. Although, I have noticed a few of the girls looking at me. I think the fact that I don't want to date anyone means that they want what they can't have. One of the girls once told me that some of the women at work talk about me and have bets on who could be the first one to get a date with me. Apparently, a lot of them were involved. Even some senior members of staff. Mostly, I tried to ignore all of this. I thought it was quite silly and childish. I just wanted to get on with my job and do the best I could. I was completely focused. One time, quite recently, I was in the office kitchen making myself a cup of coffee. Matt, the big-time CEO who got me the job, was in there talking to the personnel manager, whose name was Lucy. They were whispering, and I was pretending not to listen while I poured my coffee. I did try and catch what they were saying, but they were mostly being too quiet. I know it's nosy, but when you hear the important people talk, it's interesting to know what they're saying. All I managed to hear was Matt saying that he was retiring soon, and that he needed to choose his replacement. Lucy mentioned Tim as a future CEO. As soon as I heard it, I finished making the coffee and rushed back to my desk. Tim was sitting a few feet away. I gave him a big smile. I wanted so badly to tell him what I had heard, but I couldn't. It was unprofessional and might have stopped him from getting it. My insights were churning thinking about it. He asked me what was wrong, but I just made an excuse and put my headphones on and carried on working. I promised myself I would keep my mouth shut. A few weeks went by, and my lips were sealed. Eventually, Matt came out of his office and declared to the whole company that he was retiring. Everyone clapped and cheered for him because he had been a great boss. Most people liked their jobs, and the company was doing well. They then announced that they would be looking for his replacement immediately. As soon as we went back to work, I nudged Tim. I excitedly told him that he had to apply. He was reluctant, but I kept annoying him about it. I kept talking to him and nudging him. I wanted him to be the big boss. Sure, it would be good for him, and he deserved it. But it would also be good for me. I might get his job. That meant more money and more status for me. More holidays, a better car, my own team to look after. After seven years of working there, that was my dream. In the end, Tim agreed to interview for the role. I was so happy. I was even happier when I found out that he got it. I even went out and bought a bottle of champagne, which we drank after work. I was genuinely pleased for him. Even if I was secretly hoping for a promotion myself, that was a topic for later. That night, we just celebrated. There were still a few weeks to go until Matt's retirement, so Tim was still around. They started looking for his replacement. As soon as they advertised the job, 
everything started to change. I saw the job advert pop up on my company email. Instantly, I replied to apply. I wanted to be the first person in there, showing that I was super keen. After a few minutes, Lucy, the personnel manager, came over to my desk and said she wanted a word with me. It was weird. It looked like she had just freshly put on makeup in the middle of the day. She was not an unattractive woman. I'd noticed how good-looking she was, especially for someone senior in the company. But because I'm a professional, I try not to think about it. Anyway, I went with her, assuming it was about the job. She took me into a small office and sat me down. Before I could say anything, she proudly told me that she was the person in charge of choosing Tim's replacement. Tim couldn't do it yet because he wasn't in charge. Matt couldn't do it because he was leaving and didn't have an interest. As personnel manager, it fell to Lucy to do it. I was sat at the table in the office, but she didn't sit down. Instead, she stood and leaned over the table towards me. It was kind of weird and intimidating. I didn't know where to look, so I just stared her in her eyes. Then, it got really weird. She told me that she liked my eyes, that they were blue like the sea. She then put her hand on my shoulder. I shrugged it off and asked if there was anything she wanted to ask or say about the job. Straight up, then, she told me that if I wanted the job, I had to go on a date with her. My eyes almost popped out of my head. How could she have asked that? I asked her to repeat herself, and she said it again. It was unbelievable. She then went on to explain that I was hot property in the office. She was part of the bet amongst the girls to see if I would date any of them, and she intended to win. After that, she said, no date, no job. If I didn't date her, I wouldn't get my promotion to Tim's job. If I told Tim or Matt, she would tell them that the whole situation was the other way around. She would tell them that I cornered her and offered to date her for a promotion. That would mean I'd never get it. I didn't know what to do. So I just got up and stormed out and went back to my desk. That whole day, I had to try and look normal, even though I was sweating buckets and my face was red. That night, I lay awake thinking about it. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad to go on a date to get a job I deserved. Lucy was a good-looking lady. How bad could it be? No, I, I couldn't do that. I have to be professional. As I fell off to sleep in the early hours of the morning, the cogs of my brain were working on a plan. The next day, I woke up tired. My eyes were red and my skin was pale. It didn't matter, because I had a plan. I strode into work and went straight to Lucy's office. I knocked on the door and went straight in and closed it behind me. Before she said anything, I started talking. I was in charge now. I asked her if yesterday was a dream. I couldn't quite believe it. It must have been a dream. She laughed out loud and said it wasn't a dream. I told her again that I still couldn't believe it. Maybe I was confused and I misunderstood. She had to tell me again. So she did. Again, she stood up and leaned over the desk. She told me, no date, no job. No one could do anything about it, and I couldn't tell anyone. That was where she was wrong. I took my phone out of my pocket and showed her that I was recording the whole conversation, and now I had evidence against her. Instantly, she broke down crying. She started saying sorry and begging me not to do anything. She said I could have the job with no date. All I had to do was keep it a secret. I got up and left without telling her what I was going to do. The truth is, I didn't know. In truth, I really wanted to tell Matt and Tim. I still do. If I tell them, she will get fired. She deserves to get fired for her blackmail. But then, maybe I won't get my dream job. If I don't show them, I get my dream job. But then, what if I feel like I don't deserve it, and I only got it through blackmail? That would make me no better than Lucy. A few days have passed now. I haven't spoken to Lucy to tell her what I'm going to do. I haven't shown the recording to Matt or Tim, so what should I do now? Should I guarantee my promotion by blackmailing Lucy? It would mean more money and more status. The truth is, I'd probably get the promotion on my own merit anyway, so maybe it's not so bad. But I'll never know. I'll always think I got it dishonestly. Should I show Matt and Tim the recording and then try to get the job on merit? I feel good that I got my own back on Lucy and taught her a lesson. I don't feel good that I now have this decision to make. I wish she'd never said anything and just done things properly. What would you do if you were me?